What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have some pretty hot news today because what I'm about to tell you guys will hopefully help the future of this franchise. You guys know that Activision has always been abusing these developers. Let's be honest here. You know, Treyarch has been abused on multiple different projects, having to rush things, change things, you know, last second adjustments, absolutely horrifying. Sledgehammer has been used as a secondary, you know, team for ages now, putting them in the worst of situations, the, the biggest crunch times known to mankind. You know, they have been going through the absolute trenches and it's all because of Activision trying to make their, you know, constant yearly check. But as we all know, Microsoft is now in charge. And something that has recently happened, which is phenomenal, you know, for Sledgehammer, will also hopefully, hopefully improve the future of the overall franchise as well with all the development teams. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, before we go ahead and dive deep, if you are interested in more content just like this, we post daily here at 8 in the morning Eastern Time. And just like this video, sometimes we have, you know, a special second upload at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, if it's, you know, something that's really hot, something that just dropped, it's always live over here. So, of course, hit that notification button to be notified. And last but not least, we do stream pretty much daily over on Kick as well. And actually, if you're watching this right when this video goes live, I'm actually still live right at this moment. So, of course, if you guys want to check that out, I stream over on Kick. I got a link to that down in the description of this video. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, the other day we went ahead and discussed all the information regarding Black Ops Gulf War, you know, when it comes to it having an open world campaign, so on and so forth. If you guys want to hear about that stuff, you can go ahead and hop back to that video. It's on my channel. But there was also a piece that was written that, like I said, showcased a really good thing that Sledgehammer has done, and I really hope that this will inspire other development teams to take that stand as well. But as you can see right here from Tom Henderson, as mentioned in this article, currently Call of Duty 2025, 20 months from release, does not have an assigned main developer. It's my understanding that it was meant to be Sledgehammer Games, but following on from the 16-month development cycle of Model for 3, they basically refused and didn't want to become a year 2 support studio. High Moon Studios was in the running at one point, unclear if it's still the case, which would have made it the fourth studio ever to mainline a Call of Duty game, but I believe that it's likely going to fall to Treyarch Games in the end. Infinity Ward is already developing Call of Duty 2026, and Sledgehammer Games recently got the green light to develop Call of Duty 2027, as per my previous reporting. Now, there is a lot, and when I say a lot, there is a lot to go ahead and unpack here. From what you can see here, Treyarch was indeed going to have a full four-year development cycle when it came to Gulf War, but Sledgehammer didn't want to put up with having to be a part-time development team. They wanted to make their own games again, like Advanced Warfare and World War II. They don't want to have to be a team that picks up uh, the slack of a lot of other teams to, you know, give people a little bit more wiggle room, you know? Wink, wink, Infinity Ward getting extra time all the time, you know, at the cost of Sledgehammer games. Completely understandable. I get where they're coming from. And it's phenomenal that they actually stood up for themselves. They stood their ground. And, you know, they, they told them what they wanted, and it looks like their wishes are finally going to be granted. They can actually get a full development cycle when it comes to a COD game. And I'm really excited for that because, personally, I think Model for 3 is really fun. And I think if they have some time to actually be creative, really creative, and, you know, really go to town, it could be quite literally a banger minus the skill-based matchmaking. Of course, you know, skill-based matchmaking, we don't know what the future of that's going to be, but as long as it's relevant, you know, I don't think people are going to be happy. But when it comes down to gameplay, you know, the gameplay side of things, I think it's going to not be too shabby if they could take their time with this. But, like I said, there's negatives here because now who is going to go ahead and develop this game? Is it going to leak back over to Treyarch, which, you know, isn't bad because Black Ops 2 was their baby. And even though there's completely different developers working at Treyarch now, it still runs in their company. And I feel like they would feel proud to go ahead and put out a game like that. But, you know, at the same time, I want all their focus on Black Ops Gulf War. I don't want them hyper-focusing on, you know, another title that has to release quite literally a year after the one that they're dropping that means that they're going to have to go ahead and put in work you know sometime near the end of this development cycle for the you know current game that they're working on right now they're probably working on it as we speak if they're you know going ahead and developing the black ops 2 sequel you know because we are creeping up on the actual launch of call of duty 2024 so you know i i guess this would be the final year of their development cycle their four-year cycle which means yeah they're if anything they're probably already working on it but I really wish and I hope that that's not the case. I hope from what I read here, you know, High Moon Studio was in the running at one point. 
I hope that they can continue to be in the running and that they will opt into putting in a brand new team, not brand new team, you know, obviously, but, you know, a different team for a mainline Call of Duty game. So far, it's only been Sledgehammer, Treyarch, and Infinity Ward. Raven helps out on projects. They do the campaign for certain games, like it's rumored right now that Raven's making the campaign for Gulf War, which is great, because if Treyarch does have to put together the Black Ops 2 sequel, at least they didn't have to worry about Black Ops Gulf War's campaign. All they had to do was multiplayer and zombies. Cuts them a little bit of slack, but, you know, Raven, they, they don't make their own game, sadly. They were mastered Call of Duty 4, and uh, they work on Warzone, and that's mostly it. And then, of course, they're a support studio uh, for pretty much all the games across the board. I want to see, you know, a team like Raven or High Moon Studio come in and actually develop a title like the Black Ops 2 sequel. I think that would be phenomenal. And again, it will give Treyarch the time they need, and it makes sure that they don't have to crunch, man, because that means it's just going to be extra crunch time. Am I right or am I wrong here, right? Like, it's great and all that Treyarch would be able to develop a Black Ops 2 sequel, but realistically, they need a little bit of a break. They're just getting off of putting out a full project now for 2024, and then they have to go right back into it and keep going for the next game. I don't know. It could it could be done, obviously. As Sledgehammer has proven, they can put out a, you know, a game that runs with, you know, that amount of time, but is it good for their mental? Is it good for, you know, the, their happiness with their job? And I know a lot of people are going to say, who cares? But, I mean, it's very serious. We're, we're in a creative industry here, you know? If you, if you love games, games are inspired by creativity. And if the people who are working on these games aren't happy, if they're not intrigued or excited or any of that stuff they're not going to be creative they're going to give us the most bare bone bland stuff and not really put much effort into it and that's not what we want out of you know call of duty let alone a black ops 2 sequel right i i don't know i i, I truthfully don't know but I feel like they need to bring in a different team to go ahead and work on this. But at the end of the day, like I said, Sledgehammer stepping up for themselves might inspire other development teams to do the same. Wink, wink. Treyarch, maybe they will say the same thing. You know, we just went ahead. You know, we finally got, after all these years, Black Ops Cold War and Black Ops 4 and all these other, you know, we finally get a full development cycle where we can be creative. We can do what we want. You know, can, can we just have this one time? Can we just have this one time and finally have a bit of a break and not have to worry about crunching or picking up different projects or, you know, doing all of this nonsense? They need to speak up for themselves if, of course, that's what they want to do. I hope that's what they want to do because, again, like I said, I don't want them to be stre over overly stressed out when it comes to developing the Black Ops 2 sequel. I don't want any of the teams to be overly stressed out. That is going to be a game, whether we like it or not, even if it's just a campaign that's going to be popping and maybe zombies and stuff of that sort. You know, if you guys don't care about skill-based matchmaking and COD, that game alone is going to be pretty big for a lot of individuals out there, you know? It's nothing to joke around with with a title like that. And I don't want people to be uninspired, non-creative, exhausted, tired of the scene. I don't want people to be in that mindset when it comes to day to go ahead and put that out. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, go down in the comment section and let me know how you feel about all this information here. Do you think that Sledgehammer Games should just go ahead and suck it up and be the support team? Or do you think that it was a good idea that they stuck up for themselves and, you know, pretty much got their own official title? Uh, realistically, I think, like I said, I think it was a good thing. At the end of the day, I think it was a good thing. Even though uh, Treyarch might have to pick up the slack and they might have to go ahead and struggle again. It's nice to see that the development teams are finally standing up a little bit, right? They've they've always just done exactly what they're told to do. And it is what it is. I understand the circumstances. But, you know, it, it's a reason for why a lot of the fans feel like they can't get what they can get. And to see a team finally stand their ground and say, you know, we want to you know, have time to put together a good project. Just, it, it means a lot. And it gives me a little faith. That other teams, like Treyarch, for example, will do the same for themselves. You know, I don't know if they'll be able to do it this time around. But, you know, if there are other studios who are willing to go ahead and put out a, you know, a full-fledged out title just to give some of these other developers a little bit of time, you know, I, I don't see too much wrong with that. You know, maybe if they lied about it and, you know, they did put it together, but they put Treyarch's name on it or Sledgehammer's name on it, we'll be pissed because this doesn't feel like Sledgehammer or this doesn't feel like Treyarch, you know, and then people will be a little annoyed. But if we know right out the gates that it's a different development team putting it together, we'll go in with that mindset. And if we know that it's going to benefit us in the future and it'll give us better projects because, you know, the other main teams will have more time to work on them. Again, I don't think people are going to be 
too salty about that. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like. If you hate it, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell. We post daily here at 8 in the morning Eastern time. And sometimes we even post in the afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern time, just like this video right here. So, of course, hit that notice so you can be notified on all recent uploads. And last but not least, we do go ahead and try to stream daily over on Kick, besides Sundays, of course. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, if you want to hang out, vibe out in the chat, by all means, I have a link to that channel down in the description of this video. But as always, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.